guiding. Hey, good morning. Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Good to, see you. Good to be back. Amen. Good to have you back. No, this is good. Thank you. Is that turned on? Before Sophia came in, I said, this morning I woke up and I could hear out of my ear, I have this little piano uh, music that goes off at 7 a.m. And I woke up and I could breathe. So I've been sick for a month. The minute I got to England, I got sick. And then I got off the plane yesterday and I was still sick. And uh, Sophia prayed, Kathy prayed and anointed me with oil. And this morning I woke up and I got this, uh, this phone down by my ear. I'm on the ground and praying and it's playing this piano piece. So now at seven o'clock in the morning, it plays this piano piece. And it's like, it goes into my heart. You know, it's this yeah. thing that was with me in, over there in Europe. I listen to it every day and it's, it would, it would just call me to God. Mm -hmm. But this morning, I'm like, that sounds better than it ever did. <laughs> and it was my left ear, which has been completely clogged. So the prayer, it had to be the prayer. I've been doing Sudafed and sinus and Ephraim and Flonase and, you know, hear the little prayer and the, uh, uh, it worked the best. Amen. So Amen. thank you. Amen. That was a real nice. So God did a lot. So, um, I don't even know where to start, but I went to, I was, <clears throat> let's just start with a little prayer, okay? Thank you, Father, for everyone who's here, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for, for what time you have placed us here in this world, God. It's, it's really important that we, <clears throat> that we recognize uh, where we're at in, in the course of human history, God, and play our part, play our part as uh, Christians, play our part as the church, God, to, to seek your will, um, and 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 strength and courage to do what what you would have us to do in this generation, for this generation of souls, God, that you would uh, that you would anoint us to do that, God, to, to to rise up, put both feet in eternity, and trust you and go forward in your work. I pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. So last night, the scripture God gave me, when I was in England, I was going back to this Haggai, and I know we studied it, but my second night in England, God laid this, this thing back on my heart, and I went back to this book of Haggai. But I, wanna, I just want to turn to uh, Amos chapter 6 and verse 1. Amos 6, 1. Hey, Jonathan. I was looking a little bit about uh, Amos this morning. He was a contemporary of Isaiah, a contemporary of Hosea. He was in Jer uh, Jerusalem, Judea, preaching to them. He preached to the northern kingdom. He was from the south. But uh, it was at a time of, 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 of you know, it was a, a time of great apostasy when, when, when the church, or, or when uh, God's covenant people... Does he have a title? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Just, we need it here. Yeah, it changed. I didn't want, I didn't want yeah, to interrupt. Nice. So no, no, no. You can, you can. It's going to come soon. Yeah. So, uh, Amos preached to the people. You know, and prophets are not politically correct, right? They can't be. They just, mm. right. they can't wow. dull it down. Mm. And God, when God says stuff, he says it. It's not like, listen, sit down, you know. God, it, it has, you know, the hammer has to be sharp to, to, to break through the granite. And we live in a time of great uh, um, hardness. Mm -hmm. I saw such secularism in, 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 in England. Mm -hmm. yeah. Secularism oh, yeah. on Christmas, just nobody mm -hmm. wanted to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you look up, I'm looking up at St. Margaret's Church, and it's like, give God glory. And I want to just say to the people, look, just look up. Mm -hmm. what, what, you, know, you don't know how far you've fallen mm -hmm. until you compare yourself to God's standard. And you compare yourself to the former glory that God had established with a previous generation. If you just look at our generation, you might think, well, oh, you know, things are pretty good. But if you compare yourself with a, a, a former glory, a, a glory where God has met with people and met a generation of people, mm -hmm. you'll say, wow, we've fallen. 
When I was in England, I, I would, oh, that was the paramount thought in my mind and heart. Look how far they've fallen from God. You know, a place that God has, has established. Mm -hmm. So God, so God, God, you know, God sends people with strong words. And, and God was sending Amos to Israel with a strong word. You know, judgment is coming. You, 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 judgment is coming. But here's what he said to the house of, of, of Israel. In verse 1, it's a strong word. And uh, God showed me this last night. Um, it says... Verse 1, woe to them, woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the, the house of Israel came. So it's a strong word. Today I want to talk about the condition of God's church in the present world. And that's the burden that God has placed on my heart. Um, not, not because I want to be cynical or put it down. Every time I've post something on Facebook, people are like, lighten up, lighten up. But, but, but you know, um, we're in okay shape. We got people praying, the church, why do you keep putting the church down? I said, I'm not putting the church down. I love the church. But it's not what it ought to be. And in my lifetime, that's what God has put on my heart to say. Amen. And when you, when you look at the former glory, you can't have Revival, you can't have reformation until you say something's wrong, Amen. something's not right. If you accept your current conditions, you're going to just go, okay, we're okay. But if you say, I'm not taking this, it's just like being married or finding a spouse. Like, I I'm not settling. I'm not settling for this spouse that's pretending to be the bride of Christ in my lifetime because I really do have a real desire to see the real God come and visit this Amen. generation. Amen. That's right. It's just Amen. true. Amen. And so a guy, I went and preached in Milan, and a guy said, do you really think anybody's hearing you? And I said, well, you know, maybe not. You know, maybe they hear a word. Maybe they hear a scripture. God can work with those things. But I said, I'm really here to preach and to, uh, to just say to the world and to all the demons, I'm standing here, and I'm on the side of God. Amen. I'm preaching. If you're not listening... I'm standing with God. Amen. I'm not going to be part of this. That's right. Amen. So here I am. Amen. And that matters in the heavenlies. That matters right. in the spirits. Right. Even That's if right. it's a small little crack. That's right. I didn't feel like I got a lot accomplished. But God accomplished something great. And, 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 and this verse you know, ties in with it. And I just wanted to say that I'm not really a doomsayer. But you know, I, I, just, I, just, I just say that the church can't recover while they keep saying I'm okay. Amen. That's right, amen. So I'm in the, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll go back, but I'm, I'm in a hotel the, the, the first night, or it's all throughout my visit to Europe. There's not one Bible in any, in any uh, uh, hotel dresser. Okay. But the Gideons are still alive. So I'm like thinking, where are the Bibles? And I'm like, I'm like, where are the Bibles? And, and, and then when I put it on Facebook, like, where are the Bibles? People, the Christians were saying, well, you know, they've taken them out of the hotels. They've taken them out. But there was like an acceptance in them saying, yeah, they're, they're out now. It's, we're living in a dark period. What can you do? And, and, and I just was like, God, why is that right? Where, how about before the Bibles were even in mm -hmm. these hotel rooms? <laughs> Somebody said, God, mm -hmm. let's put Bibles in the hotel rooms. Yeah. And the Gideons came, and they were, you know, they went and they fought to get these Bibles in the... Amen. So when there, was, when, when there was sheer darkness, a generation woke up and inherited that darkness and said, here I am. What, what does God want to do in, in this generation? And what is on our heart? Amen. What do we want to do? Right. What's the right thing to do in our generation? And, 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 and in history, they just launched forward into the darkness. And then the results were uh, treasures that were, that were in this world because men and women of God, Christians, went out and got them. When you look at, when you look at the church and you hear them saying that we're good, you know, we're good, we're good. our worship is good, you know, we're praying. Then you go to the street on Christmas and you're like, where are the Christians? 
there are Muslims are out here. The Salvation Army band is there, but there's no one proclaiming the gospel, and that you know, and and the and and so therefore, and the world is just secularized. So it's like the the the, the fruit, the fruit, the consequence, the the reality. Look, if you think you're a good parent and your kids are a mess, anyway, <laughs> it's, that's probably bad an example. Cause, cause, but it's like the truth is in. The truth is in society. Look at society, and that is a direct proportion of, of what the church in our generation is doing or not doing. And so they're not out there. I got to tell you, they're not out there. They are not out there. And the ones that are home and the ones that are on Facebook are just saying, let the darkness come. Jesus is God. He's, you know, he's coming. He's coming. Just let, you know, let, you know, let, 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 let it be. And it's like, Wow. Mm-hmm. What if what if what if Whitfield said that? What if Spurgeon said that? What if these guys in our past had said, "It's it's okay, Jesus is coming." What if Paul said that? Mm-hmm. But he didn't. Right. I mean, he said it, right. but he went out and he's like, "We got to, yeah. you know, we got to meet these Greeks. Yeah. We got to talk to them." And 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 and, and Tyndale said, I, I, "We got to get a Bible." And somebody might have said, "But in the language of the people," until they burned them at the stake. But he, somebody might have said, "But Jesus is coming." It's okay, you know, right. you can't change the world. Our generation has got this apathy and, 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 and acceptance of, 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 of a wrong situation. Amen. And so therefore they're not, the, the, the people aren't really, they don't have blueprints to change the world. They don't mm. have blueprints to change the church. They don't have blueprints to change society. If you had a blueprint, you would put it down on paper, you'd take it to God and say, what can I do? What can we do? Mm. Anyway, that mm-hmm. was my. Mm-hmm. So that's why that, that you know the bur- So I was supposed to go to uh, Poland, as you know, but I got sick, and immediately as soon as I got to Gatwick, England, I got to a hotel, and I was just stricken mm. with 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 sickness. Mm. And I thank God, and I said, "Here we go again." Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm about to hear you, ain't I? Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> because whenever I'm. God comes to me in that, in that place. So I said, okay, this time I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to wonder why, if I can get to Poland, uh, 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 should I go out on the street and preach? I'm just going to surrender to you. So every hotel room that I got, I got a big towel and I put it on, I, I, put, this, I put the big towel down and I made it my prayer place, you know? And, and, and that's, where I, that's where I lived with God mm-hmm. for, the, for the last 30 days and just didn't do... Didn't do anything until he said, get up and go. But just look, walk around England. Walk around and see what you see. Walk around and feel what I'm, what, what I'm showing you. Survey the area. There was some preaching and there was some, a lot of tracts given out. But it was, a, it was more of a revelation of, 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 of the condition of the world, the condition of the church, and then the condition of me. And why I need to get two feet in eternity. Because all the men that I ever looked at that had made an impact for Christ, they didn't do it in a day, Jonathan. They didn't do it in a week. That's right. They did it in 40 years. They had a life plan, and, and it was like a garden. And they, I, I got to go to the Spurgeon Church, the uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle. It's a great honor. I'm sitting in there. We're reading hymns and of, 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 of singing. The guy's preaching. And I'm like, oh, they go out and they evangelize. Mm. And so... They still go and evangelize. I was so afraid that I was going to be disappointed, but I was not disappointed. I'm like, this fire still here in the, in the, in the shadow of that great man who laid a life bed of, 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 of godly works. So what God showed me over there was it's not, it's not your wisdom. It's not your, your anointing. It's your number one. It's your, it's your having two feet in eternity if you got one foot in the world and you're really not so the church in this generation i just want to say in a kindly manner they don't believe god the church does not believe god the world is winning the battle Mm -hmm. and it's time for the intercessors to take the field god told me to pray god just said pray Mm -hmm. that's all i want you to do is just pray Mm -hmm. um the wild part was uh the second night so the guy calls me 
I know, I'm jumping around. Yeah. Sorry. The, you want to scoot that up a little so you don't hit her? Yeah. The guy calls me and says, look, we changed the plans. We're not going to evangelize in Poland anymore, but you're welcome to come here and help me paint my house. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, well, I am a painter, but, you know, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> and I was real confused, you know, and there was some other things. He had some family come in and things changed. And I'm like, wow, wow what to do? So I just went to the Lord, and I, and I prayed, and I'm like, God, you know. And then um, I canceled my trip to Poland, and I had a, a bag full of Polish tracks. <laughs> Polish tracks, but I brought enough oh. Italian tracks, too. I had one and one, one Italian, one Polish. So I'm like, okay, that didn't work out. So, I, 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 you know, at some point I just felt, okay, like, I'm not going to Poland. Plus, my chest infection was so bad. I'm like, I can't go to Poland. I can't go to Germany. I can't go where it's freezing cold right now. God is saying, you can't, you know, I, I, I can't do it. So I stayed in this place called Gatwick, England, in a hotel, and I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And then the second day, I said, okay, well, it would feel weird to leave England because I have this burden on my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave England and then not even see it? That doesn't seem right. So I just said, okay, God, I'm... Can I stay here? And where should I stay tonight? So I, I booked a place on Hotel.com. And uh, <laughs> the taxi cab driver takes me there. We get there. And it's a dilapidated Adams Family house. Oh, and, and, and it's a dumpster outside and a, and, a, and a mattress. And it looks like no one's lived in it for, you know, a decade. <laughs> so I'm like... You know, oh. I got bumped, you know, I, 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 I got robbed. So I, the, the taxi cab driver says, I got another place for you. It's right up the street, the Holiday Inn. So he uh, takes me to the Holiday Inn. And I'm like, I didn't want to stay at the Holiday Inn, you know, but more bed and breakfast guy, okay? But, 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 I, but so, I, so I go up in the Holiday Inn. I walk up into this room and I'm like, ah, it's not. <laughs> but there was this big picture window. That overlooked England. <clears throat> wow. And I'm on the sixth floor. So I'm like, whoa, mm, that's promising. <laughs> I could pray at the window. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I call Hotels.com and I'm like, I'd like to report a, you know, a fraud <laughs> yeah. and get my money back. And, and they called the lady and they're like, well, the lady says she's there right now. And and and, and 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 she doesn't know what you're talking about because and I saw the address and I verified it. She's like, no, we're good. We're open for business. And I'm like, well, whatever. I'm already checked into the next place. So just give me my money back. And they did very nicely. Oh, thank you. So that was just odd. So now I'm like, okay, God, you're putting me where you want me to be. I go up to this picture window. I lay down my. I lay down the. In, in, in England, they have giant bath towels. I mean, body bath towels. And the reason I never prayed in hotels a whole lot is because I don't want to get on that dirty carpet. But so, right? So, so God showed me in Colorado, like, get the, get the big towel out and put it down and make a prayer place. So I put it down under this window. And it couldn't have been one hour later. It was beginning to get dark, and I'm looking out the window, and I'm looking at England. And all the while, I'm Google searching like who was here? Did did Wesley preach here? Like, am I am I in the am I in the footsteps of anybody? Am I, you know, because they were all around. The first church I went into, John Newton was buried there. I just walked into a church and they're like, oh, John Newton, what, what, was the uh, was the pastor here? Wow. That was from the 12th century, the church, and he's buried underneath the guy who wrote Amazing Grace. Like I was in that church, I prayed and I left the new heart tracks in there. <laughs> I get in front of this window and the Spirit of God seizes me like more than the night of the election. It seizes me. I'm looking out and I'm thinking, God, Wesley was here. They preached on these streets. Look at this place. It's forgotten you. And the Spirit of God seized me and I went down to my knees and I was just, I was, I was convulsing. I was on the ground and I was just, I was just, God had let me go into an, an, an intercessory prayer that I didn't plan on, and that and and and, and it was it was one of the most beautiful experiences that I, I was ever involved in. 
So I was down there for an hour or two just praying. And I, and I, and I, left, the, I left it down there. And I was just saying, you know, I was just saying, God, you know, I know it's just me, but don't let, don't let this happen. Don't let this happen. Don't let this happen to England. Like, please, turn their hearts back. Amen. And I was, he gave me the faith to believe that, that, that he would do it. Amen. If somebody, if the church would just Amen. start praying, he, if the church would just start asking them. When I met the Metropolitan Tabernacle Church, the preacher preached the long sermon, and it was wonderful. And the one thing he said was, you know, he said, God is saying, appeal to me. Talk to me. Bring your case to me. Convince me of your argument like a judge. Come to me. And so it was strong. Oh, amen. And I left and I was like, wow, amen. convince me. God is saying, convince me. God is saying, care enough to convince That's me. Right. God right. is saying, put two feet into this side of eternity Amen. and convince me. Because that's what Spurgeon did. That's what Wesley did. That's what Whitfield did. They weren't just wise men. They weren't just great men. They Once they put two feet into eternity and say, God, I'm here. What, what do you want to do? Then God started pouring Amen. the anointing out. Amen. Because they were, why would God do it if we don't? Why would God pour out his anointing if you have one foot in eternity? Why would God visit a generation who thinks they already have him and are so busy worshiping that they're just not even going, look how far we've fallen. So in, in the book of Haggai, God says, what do you see? Remember, we read that. And God is asking them, what do you see? And so at the window, God says, what do you see? And I say, God, I see, I see a, a country that once knew you. And now they don't. And so, 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 so after that, I knew that God had me in England. I didn't know where I was going the next day. I didn't know what I was going to do. Amen. I didn't. I just, the, the day before, I said, God, now where? And he kept driving me closer and closer to the central of, central of London. So from Acton, we went to, I went to a, a, a place called um, Queensborough Terrace. And... Uh, what we, what we spoke here about the snakes coming into a place to bring people back to God, mm -hmm. that was happening there. You could see, you could see in England, a, a, you could see a complacency on the people. Their eyes were just in secularism. Mm -hmm. They were just in materialism. They smelled good. They were walking down the street. And you could see the wickedness around them creeping in. Mm -hmm. You could see... You could see it was there. You could see um, dark darkness there, ready to bite them. Mm -hmm. So the, it was a, like a dichotomy of like a blindness, happiness, and it's like a, it was like a child playing near a snake pit, and you're like, this child's gonna get bit, and then there's intercession, but you could see the darkness coming. There was a small group of people, I can't say they're Christians, but they're kind of pretending to be Christians, or maybe they're using the name, or maybe in a different way, but they're militarized. So they're Britons that walk through, as a lady leading the pack, they walk through England with crosses, and they say, you're not going to take over our country. And they're walking in the neighborhoods that, have, that, have, that, are, that are largely um, immigrant population, where crime is up, and you can't go through there. So it, there's this battle but they're not really battling it in the spirit. They're not interceding. They're just going through saying, hey, you can't take our country. And the government put those people in jail when I was over there. They were in, they were in, they were in court in Belfast. You can't speak out over there. You can't say what you want to say. You can't say, don't do this and don't do that. You, you, you really can't say. If I was preaching and I preached against uh, immigrants or, or Islam or anything, I could be, I could be arrested. Wow. Hmm. So, you, so there's this feeling that the government is also selling out the country and that they're in on the secret. Just telling you what I saw. Um, so it was just an intense time of just asking God, what, you know, what, what is this? What is, go, what is going on here? And praying and believing. And then God saying to me, what did you do with your time? What did you do with your 40 years? You know, you're, you're, you're not a young man anymore. And I was so convicted. 
like, wow, you know, I could have planted, I could have believed and planted a life garden. So I wanted to tell the young people in the, in the progressive weeks that we meet here, like, you know, plant that garden. The scripture Amen. says that God, uh, uh, the kingdom of God is like, a, is, like a, is like a treasure and a man finds it. He, he, he buys that field. That means both feet in eternity. And then he plants that field with the help of God. And then he has a harvest. It's not the kingdom of God and the work of ministry is not a short thing. Amen. It's not a magical right. thing. Amen. It's not a lucky thing. That's it's right. not just an anointed thing. It's That's simply right. men going, there's the lost and dying people. And here I am and I'm saved. Amen. What am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? You know, am I going to, am I going to apply my life energy, my creative energy is this where I'm going to lay it down? Because all of us only have so much life energy. Amen. And then it's gone. I went to see a Monet exhibit. It was beautiful. Monet in Rome. I went there. And I was like, so beautiful. But as you watched him through the years, he was losing his life energy. He was the lily pads and all the nice stuff. But when he was old, he was just doing like this with colors. It was still great. It was still a Monet. But, 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 but God said to me, that's what it is. It's when you're young and you have all this energy that God gives you. Every person is like a flower and you bloom at a certain time in life. Uh, and, 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 that, and that could be a, a, a bloom for God. Like God intends us all to bloom at a certain time in a certain way. You only have so much energy. And after that, you fade away and the, and, and the bloom goes. And like, what did, what did I do for Christ? Where did my energy go when I look at these men who laid down their whole life? Amen. Where I was around the, um, I was around the, uh, um, the tabernacle. Uh, I was, I wanted to go to this church, but as I was walking there, I walked, I walked, I walked there sick. Uh, I was just praying and praying and praying, and and the neighborhoods were, were vile. But they were also vile when, when, when the founder of the Salvation Army walked through those same neighborhoods. And he started the Salvation Army in this park, right down the street from the tabernacle. They were vile then. Amen. And they're vile now. And you go, well, somebody could say now. I could say it. I'll, I'll move into this neighborhood. I'll, I'll, you know, it's, it was that kind of conviction that was with me. Like, the, the, the feeling of like, this is why this generation, this is why the world is in the shape that it's in. You can praise the Lord all you want. You can dance all you want. But these neighborhoods right. are dying Amen. because Christians are not getting up, Amen. getting out of the warmth and going there and saying, God, I'll lay down my life Amen. for these people. Mm. And so that's why the... Uh, that's why the Bibles are not in the drawers because no one in our generation says, let's get them back. That's right. Is that hard for the Lord? God could do that in a year. Mm -hmm. If somebody just stood up and said, I'm doing that. God, can I do that? God, can that be my cause? Can I get these Bibles back? All these thousand, all these years, God has laid treasures into the church's hands and it's one generation, they're all going away. Do you see that? Is it, is it true? Because people are just somewhere else. They've got their foot in, in this world. And so, we're, we're, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, wow. Let's go to Haggai again. And just read the chapter one. <coughs> Haggai. Chapter 1. So, I know we are a praying church, and I know that we intercede here, and, and so, I, I, again, I don't want to make it like I don't believe that we are not a church, and we're not praying. The remnant is praying. The remnant has got their heart in this thing, and refuge has got their heart into this thing. You know what gave me hope, Steve? Seeing the election last year, seeing what God is... Seeing what God can really just do. Amen. Like, wow, God just really did that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he can do other things. If the church would just say, you know, they're, they're preoccupied with sensationalism and emotionalism and happiness. But it's like, this is what that verse means. 
Woe to those who are complacent in Zion. So you're complacent, you're eating good, and you're living good, church, but the world is dying. That's complacency. That's right. mm-hmm. Look, if we were in heaven, you could be complacent. You could relax. But God's saying, why would you be complacent in the midst of Zion when, 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 you're, losing, when you're losing everything? When the church is losing everything, how could they, why, why would that be the right place to Amen. be complacent? Amen. And it's like if I'm sitting down eating a great meal and, and the world is dying. That is part and parcel what the church is doing today. I've got mine. Jesus is coming. But I'm not going to go out there and lay down my life and consume and use all my energy that God gave me to plant, to plant right. a spiritual field. And then God would, would, would cause it to grow. That's right. And someday somebody would say, somebody put a field here. Yes. When I was at the church, you could still feel the fire just a little bit. Because the man was gone. You know that that church burnt to the ground four years after Spurgeon died. Down to the ground. Hmm. The, the Baptists came back in and built it back up. 1941, Hitler dropped an incendiary bomb wow. on it. The only thing that didn't burn was the front stone, it's a beautiful building, wow. and the foundation in 41. Wow. Burned to the ground again, so twice. And the, and the people came in and, start, and built the church up. It's a lot smaller than it used to be. So the church I sat in was, was, uh, was that, was a, was a replacement church. On the same foundation. But the pastor, this Pastor Peters, joined there in 1970. And he's still there. And he wrote a hymnal. I mean, so 40 years. I mean, th- th- that's what God started speaking to me, Jonathan. It's like, it's a life work. Amen. And I want to tell young people, like, anybody, wherever you're at, you just, just, man, give, you know, give yourself to God in your younger days and right. ask him what he wants you to do and, 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 and make a plan and do it. And uh, God will give a, a, a rich harvest in, in, to the church and to the world in this generation. That's why our treasures are tarnished. That's why they're stealing them because no one's really living in that, few are living in that reality. The Church of England is losing. But I have hope and I want to go back. I want to go back. Everywhere I preached, when I was finished, I said, wow, there was, there was a place where Whitfield preached. They used to hang people, and it was right down the street called the Moorfields. It was right down the street from the, from the tabernacle. And um, after I prayed for nine days, I began to give out tracts. It was so much different than the time I went there and got sick because I wanted to preach the first day. I just waited on God. And when I started giving out tracts, people were like, what is that? Let me have that. Let me wow. see that. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. I never saw it. I was walking down where Whitfield had preached, and I was just in the spirit. It's praying. And I went to give a guy a tract. And he said, no. The next thing you know, I was a block away, and this guy is running down the street chasing me. And he says, give me that. Same guy. Same guy. Because wow. I was like, I was like, who are you? Who, who, do I know you? I, <laughs> he says, I want that. I want that track. Sorry, I turned that down. I, I need that. Wow. Give me that. Wow. The Holy Spirit just. Wow. So Thank God you. showed me like that. You can't do anything in ministry, Ryan. It's all got to be soaked in prayer. Amen. It's all got to be soaked in intercession. Amen. Amen. It's all got to be me. Amen. But God let me get sick again. But this time I was like, thank you. I want, I'll take this. This is a gift. I'm down. And you're, and you're and, you know. And then when I went out, after nine days, God started doing these things. Amen. And people chased me. I never was chased down for a track. <laughs> so I knew that the God was working. It was just like a little sign, just a little trickle of water saying, Look, I'm still here. I'm eternal God. I didn't change. Mm-hmm. No one believes me in this generation. Right. You want to believe me? Mm. Mm. If you want to believe me, I'll do it. Amen. With you, for you. I'll do it. I'll partner with you. We can, you know, not saying you can win the whole world back, but it, I, it, can, it can change. If, if people would get out there with their faith, you know, and say, God, no. I don't want to lose what you gave us. Amen. God would not let them lose it. Amen. They're only losing it because they're asleep and they don't know they're losing it. 
and they've traded it in for worldly morsels. And I've done the same. I mean, we do that. We, we, we choose to keep some feet in this side of eternity. Then when you're older, you go, why did I do that? Why didn't I let God do that with me, you know? Amen. The biggest thing in England was to say Merry Christmas. I tell you, it was like a miracle. And, and I was just like, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Jesus can give you a new heart. And when I said Merry Christmas, it was like people, they would just be like, ah, oh, you, I can't believe you said that. Like, that's great. It was, there was hope in it. And I said, yes, Donald Trump said I could say Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I'm bringing it here. And, uh, and, but it really was true. It's like, America took a couple of steps back towards God and Europe hasn't done that yet. So when I went over there, you could sense like there was a little difference between what God's doing here. They felt a little bit more like judgment was still right there. It didn't feel like they've, they've turned yet. I talked to cab, taxi cab drivers, man, they all know what's going on. Mm. They all know it, but they're like, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. Mm. And believing in God right now is like the last thing that they think is going to work. Mm. It's the last thing that anybody really thinks is going to work. Everybody's trying to beat their way out of paper bag. It's like, just, just ask God. The same God who gave you this kingdom in the first place would gladly come in. His word says it. Amen. And he would give you back. Amen. If your hearts would change. Amen. So saying Merry Christmas to people was like, politically incorrect, but they wanted it. It took them back to an earlier time when they had a little bit of more freedom, when the snake wasn't squeezing them so tight. Mm -hmm. And I could see when I said it, they were just like, oh, praise the Lord. Like they were just, they were receiving it. Like I'm saying Merry Christmas as a, like as a Christian. After nine days, I went to Rome and uh, God let me mm -hmm. preach. God let me preach in Rome. I, pre I preached. We, we went with us in there to Vatican. That's enough. And, and, and God, when I got to Milan, God just opened my mouth. But it was after nine, ten days of just, I said, so the wild part of the story is that the pastor, Edward, from Africa, I was talking to him during this time. And, uh, and uh, Pastor Edward said, uh, I walked those same streets that you did that you're at right now. I prayed like you prayed in Antioch. He said, I seated those same streets that you're at right now with my tears and asked God to bring England back back to him. I was sending money over there for the cow. We, they were having this Christmas party. And at the same time, he was emailing me, go to Oxford Circle, go there and preach. So all of a sudden he started building me up when I was at my weakest. I was just really weak and I was afraid. I'm like, you know, it's hard to go preach by yourself. I'm sick. I'm in a hotel room. I'm, I'm just, I'm just interceding. I'm down there with God. I'm, you know, and, and I'm like, but, but, but God, like, can I open my mouth? Can I, can I go out to the street? Can I, can I yell out what I see? Mm -hmm. And, and the pastor from England started saying, I was right where you are. That was my old area. I used to preach all around there. Go here, go there, go there. And he was encouraged. Like I, I, I sowed those streets with tears so then I was like, oh, God is in this thing. Mm -hmm. God is in this thing. Not only is this the area where the, re the reformers all were, mm -hmm. this is also an area where this pastor in England was too. So there was, and, and, and God let me go out and proclaim the gospel. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was amazing. And then I had, the, I had all the uh, Italian Bible tracts and I was just giving them out in Venice, giving them out in Milan, giving them out in Rome, and people were just taking them, taking them, taking them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was just thankful, and I learned, I learned a great lesson. It was a huge, it was a, just a huge uh, experience for me. But this time I bent, I bent the knee quicker. This time I didn't fight so much. This time I recognized that right up front what God was, was trying to, to talk to me in my spirit and teach me things. Mm -hmm. And I just bowed the knee sooner and stayed there with him. Mm -hmm. And then soon, you know, the scripture that says if you, if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. When I was just down, then God said, okay, it's been 10 days. It's time to get up. And he built me up and let me go to the street and, and preach. Amen. Amen. Where I couldn't do that before in my own strength. You remember, I, I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Haggai 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, 
in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Thus speaks, thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, This people says, Excuse me for my weakness. I'm still hot, I'm still sick, but I'm here, right? So, oh. The people say, and he's talking to the church. He's talking to the house of God. The people say, the time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. It's not the time. Not, not, not now. Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet and said, It is time. Is Oh, sorry. Is it time for you, mm. O ye that dwell in your... My King James says... Sealed. What does that mean? Sealing. Sealing. Okay, sealed houses. And this house lies in waste. So the people said, it's not time to build the house of the Lord. And God says, oh, is it time to build your own house? Mm -hmm. Is that what time it is? Mm -hmm. So is, that's the question now. It's like, mm -hmm. what about the house of the Lord? What about England? What about the former glory? Mm -hmm. Oh, you say it's not time. But is it time that you can panel your house and, and fill your retirement? And is it, is it, it, so God is asking the people. I see your houses are nice. Mm -hmm. Seems like you care about your stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be real. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Your house is good and my house is broken. And I'm God. <coughs> now, now therefore, thus says the Lord, <coughs> consider your ways. <coughs> consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough to drink. But you are not filled with drink. You clothe you but there is none warm and he that earns wages earns wages to put them into a bag with holes mm. thus says the lord of hosts consider your ways go up to the mountain and bring wood and build my house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified said the lord mm. you look for much and lo it came to little and when you brought it home i blew upon it why says the lord because of my house that is wasted and you run every man unto his own house. Is that not what we're doing today? I mean, let's just be honest. Is that not what the church generally is doing today? Just saying, I'm going to go to church, but my house is more important than God's church. So God says, okay, I'm the one who's blessing you. So you're going to take those blessings, you're going to put them in a bag, and the bag has holes in them. You're not going to get blessed. You're not going to have anything because you put your, you put your life in front of mine. So when I was in England, God said, that's why the Bi God told me, that's why the Bibles aren't in these dressers right now. Because people <coughs> are fighting. It's not that they're not fighting, but they're fighting for their retirement fund. They're fighting for their kids' education. They're buying, they're fighting for stuff that's not God's cause. Amen. These Amen. men and women of God in the, in, the, in, the, in the former days who saw the glory of God they put their own interest aside. I'm sure Spurgeon could have made a lot of money writing books. And, and, and some of these blessed men could have had great careers in the world. Amen. To put your career aside for God is huge. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. They put it aside. And they say, God, your interest comes first. Your house comes first. And that's why the church of God in previous generations right. really prospered. Not just a little prosper. That's not just I'm going to go there and have a nice dance and get some good feelings and then go back to building my own kingdom. And so, to, so that 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 that's why we're back in Haggai because I'm I'm sitting there and when I go and when I went on Facebook and I said, "Where's the Bibles?" People said, "You know, they've taken them out. What are you going to do?" Mm. But if I said, "What about your refrigerator? What about your washer and dryer?" What about your bank account? Mm -hmm. They'd be like, oh, wait, you got my attention now. What, what, what do I need to do? Let that stock went down two points. Oh, I better go call, let me 
Let me go call my... They would do something. When you take action, it means you love something. When you take action, it means that's you. You possess that. Now, I'm, in, I'm in this thing. But God's house, you know, I'm not so into it. So God, God was calling them out here in Haggai. He was calling them out. It's like, my house is in ruins. And then you're asking me to, to bless you. I've never hit this thing so much. Know, that's right. It's like, wow. I'm trying, but I'll this be way, like, this right. Let's see you guys. Yeah, that's okay. So God says, so it really hit me as a, as a, as a real practical principle that I'm cold again. <laughs> You're having a lot of fun. You know, yeah. <clears throat> My chest got so yeah. infected over there. I took them over there. Yeah, I got them. Okay, good. It didn't really seem to work. Yeah. Wow, I was really scared. I was really like, wow, I'm really, I don't know, it makes you feel old when you can't breathe. <laughs> and like, wow, you know. But, but, but from, from a practical moment in time, when I was down on my knees, God said, this is the, this is the problem with the modern church. Right. Their heart's not in it. They're giving it, a, they're giving it a one footer, and, and expecting God to come. They're pretend, so they've created a theology that makes them feel like they have God. It's like I've got a soda, I've got a steak. Yeah, the world is starving. This guy doesn't have anything, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. That's the, that's the doctrine. <laughs> Whereas Jesus Christ, his doctrine was. Let me read that to you. And we'll go back to Haggai. Jesus. This is what it says in Hebrews 12, 2. Speaking about going right to Christ and his motives and his mission and how 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 two-footed he was in the kingdom of God and the reality in the garden of Eden he prayed not my will but yours he was said I've come listen Hebrews 12 2 looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of God looking unto Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. For the joy that was set before him endured the loss of his human life. For the joy that was set before him endured the loss of not having a home. Endured the loss of not having a bag of treasure laid up for himself. Endured the loss of not having a wife and children. He was all the way in. And God, it's the only way that the kingdom of God can work. Is if we're that, you know, if, 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 the Bible says, here we have no lasting city, but we seek the kingdom to come. Jesus took on the burden of God. It was the burden of God for man that Jesus took on. And it's the burden of God That's right. that he wants to, us to take. He wants to share with us pieces of his burden. And he says, will you carry my burden? Will you carry a piece of my burden? And what part of my burden will you carry? And will you carry it until it breaks you? Will you, will you carry it? Will you carry it? So, so it's as simple as going to God saying, yes. You know, yesterday we spoke about uh, abortion and, and the uh, 43rd. 45th year since Roe versus <clears throat> Will you carry that burden? Will we put the burdens on us and say, look, here's, how, here's what it is. You put a burden on yourself and you say, Scotland's lost. God, I'm here. I'm a Christian. Give me Scotland or kill me. Give me, give me, take down abortion or take me out. It, look, if you're in it with both feet, that's how you're going to act because you got to. Now you've cut the cord and you're out here. You need God to come. When you, when you put two feet in eternity, you're God, you need God to come. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you Amen. step out as a missionary, you need God to come. Amen. Amen. And God will come Amen. because you did your part first. Yeah. And you stepped into eternity with him. 
And people wonder, why is it not working? Wonder why this thing is not working. Get over here, shut the door, and say, give me, give me something. Take out abortion in my lifetime. Amen. Don't you believe God can do it? Amen. Don't you believe He can do it? Take the burden on and say, God, I can't do this, but this is, a, this is wrong. I'm not going to... Why are we accepting this? And, and, and so many other things. The lost, the, my family, my sister, my brother, why am I accepting their lost condition? Why am I praying five minutes and eating a sandwich for 20 you know what? Why? Why? And and, 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 and and so there's the true condition. It's like, God, my heart's not like that. But make my heart like that. I want to be like that. I couldn't pray for those people in England. I wanted to go eat. But God said, look, let me pray for you. Let me pray in you. Let me pray with you. Let me, let me, let my, this is my spirit praying in you as you surrender. And then, and then it was. And then I said, that prayer is going to work. Amen. Some, but something's going to change here. Amen. And that's what happened during the election. People were praying, yep. God, don't let us go over. People carried the burden. They got to the Amen. place where it's like, yep. you got to give us, you can't give us, you got to give us yep. something or we're yep. going to go over the cliff. Yep. Give me this or I die. Amen. We were there. Yep. Yep. We were on the shore. Amen. We were on that, we were Amen. on that, uh, uh, the Pharaoh was, was there chasing us. And we were on the Red Sea and it was like, God, you gotta open this. Thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta open this water, or I'm gonna die here. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that. Do we have it? That's what we need. Mm -hmm. And God's saying, that's what I want you to have. That's right. Because I'm gonna do all the work. God could overthrow abortion in one day. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture I was reading, I don't even know where it is, and God says, I can do it in one day. Oh, I, oh. I, so from Haggai, I went to Zechariah, and, and, and then God was saying, um, I don't know where the scripture is, but God can say, oh, God told, God told, uh, 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 God told, oh, we got to go there. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, here it is. Jo uh, Zechariah 3. This was like the next, every time I got on the ground and <clears throat> on my prayer towel, God would give me, God would give me something. To eat, and God, get, and this is what He gave me one morning, um, Zechariah three. Okay, so um, and He showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan! Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. <clears throat> Rebuke you. So God's choosing, God's will is paramount in that verse. Uh, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? He's pointing at Joshua. Is not this a brand? Is not this my will? Didn't I save this Joshua? Now, verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the Lord. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him. Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of, of raiment. Verse 5, And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with Garments and the angel of the Lord stood by. This is the righteousness of of, 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 of of faith, the righteousness that comes by faith. This is the righteousness of Christ, uh, replacing Joshua's righteousness. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. When he came before the Lord uh, in his filthy garments, he didn't pretend. He didn't. It was Joshua. He came. He came, and he was recognized. And there's the devil saying, "Look at him. He's dirty." He's dirty. And God says, isn't this a brand that I plucked from the fire? <laughs> and, then, and then God changed his garments. Mm -hmm. Joshua didn't do it. And verse 6, And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, if, and if thou wilt keep my charge, 
Then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee place to walk among these that stand by. <laughs> Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, see it's God who appoints us, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondering at. For behold, I will bring a branch forth, my servant, the, the, the branch, Jesus Christ. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. I'm just skimming, I'm skimming. Mm -hmm. Now I'm jumping into verse 4. Chapter 4? Yeah, chapter 4. Okay, and the angel, verse four, uh, chapter four, and the angel that talked with me came again and, <coughs> walked, and walked and waked me as a man that is waking out of sleep and said, what, what do you see? And I said, I, I've looked and behold a candlestick and of, of, of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and the seven lamps there and the seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left verse 4 so I answered and spake to the angel and talked with him with me saying what are these my lord then the angel that talked with me answered and said knowest thou not what these are and I said no my lord and he said and spake unto me this is the word of the lord to Zerubbabel saying not by might not by power but by my spirit says the lord of hosts And then this verse below it saying, um, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that has become a plain? And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. So the morning, the morning that I wanted to, the ninth day, this is what God showed me about Joshua. And he was, God was, this is the day I went out to preach. And God was saying to me, you know, just come before me, lay before me. Let me, you know, let me, let me cleanse you. Let me put my garments on you. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's, 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 it's my spirit. Amen. When you Amen. surrender and when you just surrender and say, God, I don't have a plan. I don't know what to do. I just, I just, I'm here, you know, and, and, and look what God, and look what God did, look what God did for Joshua uh, when the enemy was, 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 was accusing him. There's one verse in here, but I don't know if I can find it, but it said um, that God can do it in a day. That's what I was looking for. Um, whatever, whatever had to be done here. Was it verse 7? We were reading, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and shall bring forth the headstone. Therefore, it was shouting, it's kind of grace, grace, and beauty. Was that it? I, it, was, it was a mountain? There, there's a verse that says that day. God can do it in a day. Okay. Um, somewhere in the next couple of chapters. I read the whole book, and so okay. that wasn't... I just wanted to... I just felt compelled to, to go there now, but I didn't... Um, uh, I'll get back to you where this verse is. Mm -hmm. Nine twelve. Well, God says, but the, the 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 point of it is, and if somebody finds it great, it was, it was like like God was saying, I can do this in a day. I'm this is nothing for me, but 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 here's what you need to do first. You know, I need to cleanse you. I need to I need to get you in in a sur, in a surrendered state. And, and and then and then what what seems so hard can be accomplished in a day. Amen. Abortion could just go down in a day. Amen. And then we would just go, wow. And God's saying, if you do your part, I'll do my part. God has done such things in the course of human history. He's opened up. I know these are theoretical things, but now we're into the practical. Because that's if Christianity can't be practical and it can't be real and it can't be what you see on the street, then 
It's, it's theoretical. You have to take the theoretical doctrinal and marry it to the streets. And then it becomes real. And it has to be real. And, if it don't, and that's, why, that's why Christianity hasn't worked for a lot of people. Because it, it, worked, it worked in church. But when they went out, it didn't work. 3.9. Notice the stone I have set before Joshua. On that one stone are seven eyes. I will engrave an inscription on it. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. And I will take away the iniquity of this land. In this Amen. Wow. In a single day. Is that the one you were looking for? Yes. Yeah. So that's like what, what, what I, heard in, I heard God saying in England. is like, I can, I can, wow, why does things seem so hard to us that are so easy for God? Uh, no one would believe that God could turn Amen. a nation around in a day. But Amen. that's what God said to me. Mm-hmm. I, can, I, can, I, can, I can take this people who don't, don't even know me and I can turn this nation <clears throat> in one in one single moment. Amen. And when we had the election, we also had a moment like that. Mm-hmm. And the next day I said to people, does anything seem different in the atmosphere? Because it seems different. When I got saved in 1977, I, I was saved from sin. And I was walking on the boardwalk and the beach. And like there was such clarity in the air. There was such... Christ, everything was fresh and alive, and I, I would, you know, walk with people saying, "Does something seem different?" And they're like, "No, it doesn't." I'm like, "But it does to me, mm-hmm. because I, uh, I was a, God did something in my life, and He changed my my eyes, and He changed my heart, and, my, and I could see different, mm-hmm. and I could breathe, and it was like there's clarity in the air." Mm-hmm. I tell you, the day after the election, I felt that same way. I was walking around like something's different, and that's when you know God's done something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And no one, the only thing that could have helped that in a smallest degree is, is, is prayer Amen. and intercession. Amen. You know, people have the wrong idea of prayer. They think like, like the Reba McIntyre people are like, if we get in a chain and we just hold hands, the power of our prayers would change things. That is wrong. That's not the right way of prayer. Prayer is a child saying, God, I can't help me. Amen. I can't help. Right. I can't do this. <clears throat> prayer is more yeah. dependent yeah. <clears throat> and more and more broken yeah. and and weak. And God, I tell you, God comes into that time. Yeah. God will come into your weakness. It's that we don't trust Him to go there. Right. We don't trust Him That's to right. be weak. We don't trust Him to be broken. Paul said, "God's power is made perfect Amen. in weakness." So I will all the more boast in, 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 in boast of my weakness. That and, and it's because God won't share his glory with men. And when men get all like, let me pray, let me get into this, let me change this. God's like, no, I just want you to be broken. Look at Joshua. Did Joshua do anything here? Did he say, I'm a good person? Did he say, look, I got these robes on? No, he was standing there. And the devil had full claim to him and saying, look, he's filthy. You see this this guy? (coughs) He's filthy. And God said, didn't I choose him? Didn't I pluck him from the fire? And then God put the robe of righteousness on him. So it's just God's righteousness that comes in our brokenness. But we don't, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd investment. But that's when you really know you're trusting God. Amen. When you can go down in brokenness and don't pick yourself up Amen. and wait for God to say, to put lung, air in your lungs and say, it's time to get up. Okay, I, I, I'm doing this for you now. Just like he did it here. If it, it, and, and that's what this modern church is afraid to do. Because it, 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 it takes waiting and it takes repentance and it takes, it takes being real and saying, yeah, we are in bad shape. Or we are losing our churches. We are losing the battle. God, I'm, what can I do? I'm just going to stay here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall flat on my face and, and, and I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to come up with a plan or a formula or a system. I'm just going to stay down here. And, 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 and I'm going to wait until you put the air in my lungs and the strength in my bosom and the, and, the, and the joy in my heart and the vision to get up and do something. And then you're going to say, God raised me up. This is not me. This is God. Mm-hmm. Because I went down. The Bible says, unless mm-hmm. a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. It's a Christianity that we haven't heard from ever, a long time. And that's why it seems so foreign. But it's just, you die, you go down, you invest, you get both feet into this thing, and you wait on God. 
and you wait in weakness. I thank God for the sickness. I thank God for the sickness. The first time <clears throat> I was in Rome, so I got to preach in Rome. So, so finally, it's that day. It's Christmas morning. But I got to tell you about Christmas night. So I go there, right? It's a, it, I'm in the Vatican. It's raining. I'm hearing the people humming. Of, they're humming, you know, and they're walking, right? And I got my tracks, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is weird. Like, anyway, hope there's no Catholics here. <laughs> ex Catholic myself. Uh, so I'm walking towards the Pope, and then um, he gets up and he starts preaching. The Pope starts speaking to the people. And I was like, I think I got to get out of here now, right? This is like pretty close to the whole thing. <coughs> I got to get out of here. And so I'm walking away, and I saw these homeless people, and they were underneath these portico, portico I call them porticos, but it was like a col columnade, or what do, what do you call them, John? You know, columns. And, I know what yeah, so there were people on boxes, and they were looking really rough, and dirty blankets and cardboard, and it was raining, and they were, you know, they were rough there. And I'm like, look at this roughness outside of the Vatican. Wow, this is some, they're within the Pope's voice. And so I, I said, oh, I shouldn't walk through there because if I walk through there, they're going to ask me for money. You know, it's going to be awkward. It's Christmas Eve. I just got there. This is my Christmas Eve. So I said, no, I will walk through there. I'm just going to walk through there and just soften my heart and surrender my heart and just walk through and look at this poverty, look at this sadness, look at these broken people. And I'm walking through, you know, and I'm walking through. And then uh, and, um, I think I asked somebody if they were hungry, and they were like, yeah, we're hungry. And then, and then as I got to the end of, of, of where the columns were, there was a small guy in a, like a little food truck. And he had really nice stuff. He was selling it for the, you know, the, the papal mass. You know, it was it, uh, stromboli sandwiches, really nice stuff. So I, I was like, ah, oh, I got 16 euros in my pocket because the taxi guy took everything but 16 euros. So I said to the guy, what can I get for 16 euros? He goes, these stromboli pizzas are $4 a piece, but I'll make you a deal. I'll give them to you for $3.50. And I'm like, okay, great. I'll get what I can get, and I'll feed who I can feed, and I'll leave, Amen. you know? Amen. So, so, so he starts heating them. He's like, you want to heat it up? I'm like, yeah, that sounds really good. Heat them up. And then I said, oh, cut them in pieces. Cut. They were like this big. Cut them. And then he cut, started cutting them. And then he called me over, and I would just, I took them, and I, and, I, and I went back to the people, and I said, just take one. But first, let's pray. So I got them all around, and we started praying. And then I gave him all the new track, the new heart in Italian, and we were talking and stuff. And then I went back, and the guy's like, here's some more. And then um, wow. somebody threw something at me, and then this one guy who had a spirit was like, you don't love Mary? I appreciate what you're doing here, but you don't love Mary, so you should go. Mm. Like, I didn't mention I was a Protestant, mm. but he figured it out. Mm. Maybe because, I don't know, maybe because I prayed or something. Um, so then I go back. I'm like, I'm now I'm getting out of here because food's flying out. But some of them were real grateful. They were like, thank you so much. There was an old gypsy lady there. And she was just like, oh, arms for the poor. And I gave her a sandwich. And she was just like, oh. It was just so nice. And I started getting filled with joy on Christmas yeah. Eve. Like, oh, this is what I'm doing here. You know, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know God's plan. I didn't come there to do that. I just walked into it. And then, and then, uh, and then as, I, as I, I was leaving, the guy was like, oh, you forgot your sandwiches. And he hands me like four or six more. And I'm like, now it's becoming like the loaves and the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> because I had $16 and my math was like, that's four sandwiches. And there's at least, I don't know, 18, 20 people under this place. So wow. I take the rest and I go to the other side and everybody gets a sandwich. Wow. There was one guy that said he didn't want one. So everybody that was hungry got a sandwich. Wow. And, and, and then I, uh, my heart was full with joy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Thank the Lord, mm -hmm. because here I was over there, and he gave me something that I could uh, identify with. He gave me my homeless friends to pray with and to, and, and, to, and to feed them on Christmas Eve, you know, with 16 euros, and they all ate. Mm -hmm. And they heard a little, you know, uh, and they got something to read, and they got prayed for. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I left there, and I was so thankful. And then the next morning, I woke up, and it was Christmas Eve, and I, and I went down to the Colosseum, and I went down to the Roman ruins, and I had my Bible, and I was just weak and sick and humble and asking God, is, is, can I open my mouth? And, and, uh, and, uh, and I got up on this, like, this marble thing. I found a spot, and I just started proclaiming the gospel mm -hmm. and just telling them 
look, you, you got to come back to the God that you left. You got you got to turn back. You know, God is you know God is gonna God can heal you and bring you back, but you got you you're heading in the wrong direction. I was just just started preaching, and then um. Some people came around me, some Philippine people and a guy from Serbia and a whole bunch of people came around me. And, and by that time, I had taken the one Cipro that I had, the Cipro penicillin. It was real strong. I started getting really hot. And I was preaching like, yeah, 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 come on, turn back. I said, right down that alley, Paul was in jail. Like, you're in Rome. Paul yeah. was in jail in that alley. And these emperors that you're believing and here to worship, they're dead in the ground. And God's word is alive and, and right here. Like, come on. And, 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 and the people came in. I said, at the end, I said, I was just, I was so tired and exhausted. Come on in. And they all came in. Everybody came in and prayed with me. Everybody came in. The guy from Serbia was like, thank you so much for preaching the gospel. And he prayed with me. And the people came in and prayed. And I was like, thank you, God. I said, two years ago, I was up in a, up in a hotel room right there, pointing at it. And I was so sick, I couldn't. I, I came here to preach two years ago. And, I, and God put me in a sick bed because he had to show me. It's not you. It's you've got to just surrender. Right. And now it's two years later, which I thought it was one, but it was two. <clears throat> and I said, then here I am. And God has given me, God has given me the ability. It's hard to preach by yourself. Mm -hmm. All these people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in Milan, I was preaching and, uh, and, and, and uh, anyway, Rome was good. So he, every day and every night I would walk down to the Colosseum and just, and just stand, stand up there and, and just give out tracts. Mm -hmm. So he gave out a lot of tracts and, and, and I preached. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but before I did, this was the lesson. Every day God was taking me through the scriptures on my, on my knees and saying, look, I can do this. So the church got, has to believe that right. I can do it. And if you go out there and you're preaching and you seem like a silly fool, which I did. You know, you seem like a fool. There's hundreds of people walking by. And, you know, they're just walking by. Somebody will look at you. Some guy jumped up here and every word I said he would say. He was you know, like a little monkey guy. Like, you know, I don't, whatever. Like, it was just weird. But, 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 but I really believe, you know, in a small way, God showed me a really important lesson in this in this trip it was brokenness and surrender Amen. and it was it was you want you want ministry you want this burden there's a cost and the cost is get both feet on this side of eternity because that's what all these men had even they might not have even been educated right. but they were they were they were in it Amen. and they took god's burden like you would take your dad's burden my dad can't work no more i gotta cut his grass mm -hmm. you know I'm a good brother. I shovel my sister's snow. They all have sons. I'm not one to proclaim my goodness. But I was like, where's the sons? Oh, they were hiding out. Even my son took a flight home. Like, I went over and shoveled my sister's driveways in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the snow and in the freezing cold and my lungs hurt. But I, you know, I wanted to be a good brother and I wanted to dig them out. You know, it was in my heart to take on their burden. The Muslim guy said to me, he's a, a, a Muslim, my brother-in-law that I stayed at, and he said, um, don't, just stay in and relax. He's like, I'm like, it's my responsibility. I'm your brother. You're out working. You're making money. He's plowing snow, and I'm here, so I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to shovel him. Mm -hmm. When he came home, there was a foot and a half of snow, and the driver was clean, and it wasn't any piece of snow, and I salted it. I cleaned it, and I said, I'm your brother. It's my my responsibility. You went to work. It's my burden. So I took on his burden like it was mine. And I was proud of it. I was working hard and even being sick and I shoveled the snow. But God's looking for people to take on his burdens. Mm -hmm. And you know, you say, why doesn't God care? And God says, well, why don't you care? You know, why don't you care about England? Why don't you, mm. what, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I can change this thing in a day. Pray. Mm. The Metropolitan tabernacle preacher said the only reason this church works is because we pray Amen. and all the fruit that you see is is, is, is prayer fruit mm -hmm. and I said I can't believe a guy in this generation said that because I heard Spurgeon say that one time they said what makes how, how can you have this anointing he said because there's people downstairs there's people and they're just praying 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 he didn't say because i'm wise he said it's the prayers right. and this guy a hundred years later said the same thing in his church 
And I heard it because I read the I read that uh, I read that account, and 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 and, and it, it resonated in me. So my trip was just. I tell you, God really speaks to you if you incline your heart to Him. That's right. So the first step is getting your both feet in eternity and saying, "Yeah, you know, let me stop playing games. Do I want this or do I not want this?" And the second lesson is surrender, submit, and 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 incline your heart near. Like, Lord, I'm listening. That's right. Talk to me. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. Give me a burden. Give me something in this generation to do. Ask for it. It's for the young people. Amen. It's for all of us. Yeah. But look, you're a stocks and bonds guy. There's short term, there's long term, right? I'm in the aggressive mode, right? I can't, I can't, I can't be politically correct anymore. I can't, I can't invest conservatively anymore. I got to be all in now. But young people can, you know, they can make, they can make this a life calling. Amen. That's right. Amen. And so, plant your field, and plant your feet. That's really all I have to say. I hope that uh, you know. I hope that you'll see that in the in, you know, man. It's so nice to come back mm -hmm. and know that God did something in your weakness and your sickness and your brokenness. Mm -hmm. It gives you nothing to to boast about. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I hate that. I hate that feeling and that. I don't want anything. That I just want to see God move. Amen. Amen. Even if it's in just a little bit, I want to see how <coughs> God really works in like my family and and he he really did. But it was in brokenness. You know, years ago when I was young and had strength, I, 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 I would just go and, you know, I try to do things on my own. It didn't feel like I was, but I must have been, you know. And, and, and now every time I get sick, God, I hear God. And so, you know, I don't want to pray for more sickness, but I, re I really am thankful. So I won't pray for that. Yeah. No. <laughs> but anyway, that's... Um, Let's consider the sermon. Let's consider, you know, the, the, the heaviness and the weightiness of, 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 the, of the church of God in this hour. We're not casting stones at her. We're just saying, this is what the minor prophet said to Israel. Don't be, don't be relaxed when there's abortion. Don't be relaxed when there's all this stuff, when there's child, teen, prostitution. There's, don't be complacent Amen. in Zion. Grab a burden and say, God... I'm not going to be complacent. I'm not going to be relaxed until you come. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Let's be a praying church, and let's, you know, let's continue to just be what we what what God showed us. I tell you, it's it, it's wor it, it, God's word testifies Amen. that it works, and He can change things in a in a single day. If it, it, it's not up to our faith, it's just up to us going and and getting in there with God, and uh, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and, and that's and that's that's what I came to tell you today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Close us in prayer, please. <coughs> Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, of hearing your heart. Father, thank you, Lord, to tell that you continue to encourage us, Lord, that you're looking for someone. You're looking for a church. You're looking for the church that you've called to stand in the gap, to, 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 to not to be silent anymore, but to have a heart for you, Father. Yeah. Father, that we just not to be just like, oh, well, it's... There's nothing we can do, but God, you just call us to do what your heart um, fills us with, Lord. Your heart, I mean, you, you show us through your Holy Spirit. And, and Lord, we aren't to be complacent. We are not to be ones that say, oh, well, it's going to happen. And it's wow. like, you just can't stay in that place. The, the church Amen. cannot be silent Amen. no longer, Lord. You, it, uh, it just resonates over and over and over. It's like an echo that just will not cease. That of what you're calling us to do, Lord, is just you're, God. It's just amazing how much love you have for for the world, Lord, and and God, and for your church, Lord, to stand in the gap, to to intercede. Um, and Father, we just pray, Lord, that um, that this message, Lord, we just really, really grab a hold of our hearts, Lord, really grab a hold of who we are. Lord, that we would just give up who we are and just be able to submit unto you and be as you are. So, Father, we're grateful for this truth, Lord. We're grateful for the things that Ryan has shared with us, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, for <laughs> where you've taken him to the place of weakness where he's just laid it down and says, I can't go on anymore. I can't do anymore. I can't say anymore. There's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, is just submitting unto your will and just getting to that place where you're just so down where you don't, 
you just you're, you're at your weakest point. Mm -hmm. But God, you you you're one that reaches down. You reach it. You reach down and say, oh, "No, my son or daughter, no." You're, I'm going to take you up to a higher place, Amen. to a higher calling, Amen. not where you want it to be, Amen. not where you think it's going to be, Amen. but where it's abiding in my will and what, what I've called you to do. Amen. And Lord, there is hope. Lord, thank you for the hope you've given each and every one of us, Lord, that, that when things seem out of, out of control, when things seem that there's nothing, there's nothing, I've done my best and there's nothing else I can do, Lord, you're saying don't quit. Amen. Don't Amen. quit. Do not give up. Amen. Do not lose hope. There's hope in me. Amen. Thank you, God. Father, thank you so much for this hope, Lord. Thank you so much for what you've placed in your, into your children. You've placed this into us Amen. to not lose hope, not to lose courage. Mm -hmm. So God, just thank you, Lord, for this encouraging word. Thank you, Lord, that we are to... It's not just an encouraging word. It's a, it's a, it's a call to, to move. It's a call to take, your two, to take both steps into eternity. It's a call not to have one foot in, one foot out. God, help us to, to, to really absorb all this, Lord, as a sponge, Lord. It just, I don't know if that's a good analogy, Lord, but God, just help us to, to take it all in. And Father, we just thank you. Lord, and I just pray, Lord, as we go into, into intercession, Lord, thank you, Lord, for that you've laid this upon refuge's heart. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you've, this is not something, oh, well, you know, it's time to pray. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to you. It's important to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't, we might not see the power in it. We don't see that there's any move of God in it. Mm -hmm. But God, you just say, stay, mm -hmm. stay focused, mm -hmm. stay focused. You never quit on us. Amen. God, help us never to quit on you. Amen. So God, lead us in this time of, of prayer. Father, just place upon our hearts your burdens mm -hmm. and the burden that, uh, that has resonated that really has came out of this, uh, this message, God. Mm -hmm. I, want to stay I, I want us all to stay focused on this message, Lord, mm -hmm. and the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so God, just speak to us as individuals, Lord, right now. Mm -hmm. Speak to us as individuals right now, Lord. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to intercede during this time. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just pray for, uh, we all lift up Ryan to you, Lord, and pray your, your, um, your, your peace be upon him, Lord. Strengthen his body. Strengthen him spiritually, continually, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, that, um, that he has known, that he knows that he knows that he knows that he's spoken from Amen. you, that he's spoken from the throne room of heaven. Because God, it is your heart. It is what your scripture shows, where we read in Haggai, Lord. And uh, God, just thank you so much, Lord. We thank you and praise you.